Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wally DM. Today we're going to take a look at some homebrew spells that you can use in your game. Now, these are inspired by the brand new Dungeons & Dragons book, Strixhaven, A Curriculum of Chaos. But these are not going to be spells that you're going to find in the book. These are spells that myself and my two fellow co-hosts have created. And if you would like to take a look at these, they are going to be available on my website. I will put a link in the description below. So this is a video that was created before Strixhaven came out, so if there's any similarities, then I guess we're just really good at this game. But let me go ahead and introduce you to my co-host. I have Trevor from Classes and Constructs. Hey, everyone. And Josiah from Dungeon Dad. Hello. <laughs> and we are all fans of Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons, which makes this so much fun for us. Now, I will put links to both of their channels below, so make sure you go out, check out their content, and subscribe. But with that, let's get started with our first spell, and I will go ahead and start us off. And the rules of our game is we need to take a Magic card from the Strixhaven set, which was released in early 2021. And we need to make a Dungeons & Dragons spell out of it. So the card that I chose was Multiple Choice. So with Multiple Choice, it is a sorcery that costs X and a blue. And the amount of X or mana that you put into it gives different effects. So I really like the idea of using the spell and to put different Dungeons & Dragons spell slots into it. So similar to the magic card where you could put x into it you could actually use different spell levels so we're going to begin with multiple choice being a second level divination spell this is going to take an action it's got a range of 30 feet and it's going to be instantaneous now i'm only putting this on the spell list for wizards and sorcerers and it goes like this so whenever you cast a spell using a second level spell slot roll a d20 and record the result once before the beginning of your next turn you can replace any attack roll saving throw or ability check by a creature that you can see with the result record on the die roll so kind of going for like a div divination type of an effect on that but now if you take multiple choice and put a third level spell into it or a third level spell slot then when you cast this spell all summoned animals or monsters of your choosing within a 30 foot cube originating from you will be unsummoned and if you look at the magic the gathering card it says if x is two you may choose a player they return a creature they control to its owner's hand so that's kind of what inspired me to do that so it's referred to as a bounce effect in magic the gathering and so i wanted the ability to i i like these are kind of called modal modals is it modal? Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, modal, modal spells, yeah. Yeah. So these modal spells, which gives you different options. And if you're a spellcaster, especially a sorcerer, you don't get that many spells to begin with. Or a wizard, you have to choose your spells during the day. This is a spell that's going to give you a lot of options. So I, I like the idea of being able to unsummon conjured or summon animals or monsters. But it's not a spell that I would like to have prepared all the time. So having it included is the bonus to that. And then the third option that you can do is you could use a fourth level spell slot to summon this and a large size lightning elemental appears in an unoccupied space that you can see within range and then you can give it a command such as defend and this imposes disadvantage on all attacks against you as the elemental imposes or you may command the elemental to attack the attack option is an eruption of liquid fire and uh so on with that and and comparing that to the magic the gathering card if x is three create a four four blue and red elemental creature token so those were my similarities between that and then of course to round out the spell what i thought was going to be the most fun is if you put this into a fifth level spell slot all three effects are are go off so Hell that yeah. is my choice any any thoughts or opinions on multiple choice I love that card, dude, and I love that spell. I think that's a really fun interpretation of a modal spell like that, because it's funny when we were doing this and I was looking at the spell list of cards, I saw this one and I was like, this is a really cool card. I would love to do something with that, but I just was trying to figure out how you would interpret the X cost as like a D&D &D spell. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this is exactly how you do that. Like, I think you found the correct path in doing so. Um, <laughs> Because, yeah, all of these are effects that, like, you may or may not want to necessarily have prepared, but having it rolled into one is really great utility. Yeah, I like that point the most, so that it's, like, it it helps 
uh, prevent that problem with preparing spells, especially for wizards, because they're all really specific use cases. Uh, but it's it's just a really great way to to execute this, and you match the flavor, like you were describing with the bounce effect, right? Like that's what it does in Magic, and you match that flavor with the card, and it just seems really cool. And then especially being able to actually do all of the above. Mm -hmm. Like I tried to do something similar, and every time I've tried to port like scry or scry and draw a card, I always just want to use what you came up with here, which is like roll a d20 and save the result for later. Like mm -hmm. that just seems like the perfect equivalent. So I really like this. And I I think the, the flavor just hits the nail on the head for sure. Fantastic. Thanks guys. And mm -hmm. Trevor, I, I believe you had two spells chosen and one of them was multiple choice, but yes. you decided to go with a different card. So uh, let us know what your spell is. So the card that I ended up going with, rather than multiple choice, was Devouring Tendrils from Strixhaven. And in Strixhaven, it's an uncommon sorcery, and it uh, causes a creature to deal damage equal to its power to another creature or planeswalker you don't control. It's called a, a bite effect rather than a fight. Fighting is mutual. Uh, when the permanent you don't control dies, you gain two life. So there's like a little pact on healing. I honestly didn't my goal was not to match the uh, spell effect. My goal when I created this was more to match the art and the flavor text of the card. Mm. Uh, the flavor text says wither bloom spells often take on appearances and personalities of their components. And in, I think it was one of Mark Rosewater's drive to work podcasts. He talked about how like wither bloom uh, spell casters use like material components in their spells. And I wanted to create a spell that matched that. So I created a second level necromancy spell that costs an action, or it takes an action to cast. Uh, the range is 90 feet. It uses verbal, somatic, and material components. And I don't think that a spell like this exists in 5e. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but the component you use changes the effect of the spell. I really like that. I really, yeah, that, that was awesome. Yeah. I've seen that. I was like, that is a creative idea. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a thing, and I don't know, like, obviously it takes a lot of DM and, like, player working together, but I would be okay with that in my game. Mm -hmm. um, the duration is instantaneous, and it's available for rangers, sorcerers, and warlocks. So the way that it works is two bolts of necrotic energy jet from the caster to the target. As they travel through the air, they take the spectral form that matches the animal form of the component used. And then in the spell description, I said, consider the following. So if you use snake skin or adder fang, it does poison damage. If you use wolf fur, it does piercing damage. If you use cat's whisker, it would do slashing damage. Uh, you make two individual ranged spell attacks against two targets on the hit. Uh, the target takes 3d10 damage of the type determined by the material component. So I would be completely excel, like I would be completely okay with talking with a player if they wanted to use a different component and coming up with a different type for that component. I also don't tend to have players that are like super min maxers that would try to find like something that would deal force damage or something like that like that's not how my table tends to operate but i really wanted to get that flavor across of like the component affecting the spell totally i i think role playing alone trying to get these components would be so much fun so if you have a player that's playing a a ranger and is just fascinated by this spell and they're like looking for like the rarest of different parts uh you know little pieces of animals or perhaps they have like a, a pet or something like that and uh they have like a saber tooth that falls around it has to pluck a whisker off of it every time they want to use this spell or something i i think that's fascinating i i i agree with you that that component where you know the spell changes with the component is uh, pretty unique i dig it yeah i think that uh like if i'm a dm and a player comes to me and says hey can i use this spell in our game the way I would probably handle is being like, okay, cool. So the snake skin or adder fang and the wolf fur and the cat's whisker, those are like the default components. And we can just assume like you always have those on you. They're in your pouch. They're easy to find, whatever. Right. And then that allows you by saying it's not choose one of these three by saying, consider the following. It allows you as the DM to be like, okay, well, maybe I can seed in some extra components and like that doesn't even have to change damage type you could also include components that also have like an effect or something and be like mm, you, have, you have one of these right like maybe you have a version of it that causes healing or something like that and uh giving the player like that specific player a rare spell component also has potential to create a really cool like rp moment where they get to go in and be like oh man like a shark's tooth you don't see these around too often and like have that moment of discovery and like explain to the other characters what that means for them and like they hang on to that for a special occasion or whatever 
So yeah, I that is, I, I didn't even think about like changing the effect or like making it healing or so like I, for me, it was all just like, okay, the damage type would change, but that is awesome. Like, I love that. I think that that would be super cool. I, I would put probably like this uh, aquarium or something in there with that, taking that shark tooth example, be like uh, the ranger would come in there and just sees a shark floating around. And then it looks at the other players like, that's so cool. We got to get in there. <laughs> and then yeah. the, the hijinks are getting into the aquarium tank to to pull a tooth out of a shark. That'd be totally. That's hilarious. Well done. Okay, so those were both fun. Josiah, what did you come up with? What do you have for us? All right. So this the magic card that I based my spell off of is one of the uh, neutral lesson cards, which is called Introduction to Annihilation. Which very simply, you exile a non-land permanent and its controller draws a card. So you get to delete someone's thing, but they get a card out of the deal. So depending on what you're exiling, that could be a good or bad deal for you, I guess. Um, I, I based this card, I, I was kind of following the principle, same like Trevor, where I was looking at the flavor text a lot on this card. Mm -hmm. I mean, the effect of like get, removing something is there for sure. Um, the flavor text uh, literally says, I've never seen a student fail quite so spectacularly. There's potential in that, which I thought was really interesting because the whole idea is you're taking something and doing it the wrong way, but over time you might find a way to do that in a fashion that's useful. Um, so I landed on a spell which I named Arcane Annihilation, which is a fourth level evocation counter spell. Uh, so what that means is you use your reaction to cast it. Um, Works the same way counter spell does. You target someone who's casting a spell within 60 feet of you. And the spell is countered if it's fourth level or lower, much like counter spell, which counters a spell if it's third level or lower. Nice. However, uh, it doesn't just counter the spell because you are using a spell slot one level higher than a typical counter spell. So you also get something for using that extra spell slot. So it doesn't just counter the spell. Uh, there's actually a table which you can roll on. So if you use this and you counter someone's magic missile or whatever, you also roll uh, a D8. And based on where that D8 lands, another thing happens. Uh, if you hit a one to four, the magic becomes unstable, which causes the caster of the spell, which you are countering, to take four D8 force damage or have as much of a successful save, which thematically is kind of like basically what I imagine you're doing with this spell is you're taking the arcane energy that is being used to cast a spell and you're just like tearing it apart and making it unstable. So it's beyond just the spell fizzles. It's like something bad is going to happen to the person casting it. So there's a 50% chance that it just kind of blows up in their face and they take some damage. Um, there's also a chance on a five. We have an effect which I called arcane siphon which basically you steal that magic away. So it doesn't blow up in their face, but you get the spell slot back that you use to counter the spell. I like that. Um, which basically means you just got a free counter spell. And I think that's probably one of, if not the strongest effects here, mm -hmm. because you're just deleting their thing for free. Um, however, there is only a one in eight chance that happens, so who knows. Uh, if you land on a six to seven, we have an effect I called redistribution, which basically allows you to take that arcane energy and then you cast magic missile from the person that you was casting the spell which you countered. So someone's casting magic missile, you counter that spell, then you get to cast magic missile centered on them and you can target whoever you want, which is kind of like you redirecting the magic out towards the other creatures around it. Uh, you also have the choice if you land on that effect of casting magic weapon as well. So you can steal that magic and use it to either shoot a magic missile at someone or you can take that magic and put it on your fighter's weapon. And now they have a magic sword, um, which is kind of fun. And the lastly, if you hit an eight, uh, you redirect the spell, meaning that you get to choose a new target for it. So that fireball that was going to hit you is now suddenly redirected and it lands where they didn't want it to. Um, so basically, most of the time, you're going to get the one to four effect. There's a 50% chance it's just going to blow up in their face. But there's also a 50% chance that you'll get to do something kind of neat with that arcane energy. Um, now, this spell, of course, because it's kind of dealing with unstable magic, is not without risk. Uh, typically with counter spell, if you're countering a spell of equal level or lower, it just counters the spell. If you're countering a spell that's a, like a, say, a six or seventh level spell, you have to make a spell caster check. And if you fail that check, your counter spell doesn't work. If you're using Arcane Annihilation and you fail that check to counter a higher level spell, um, not only does the spell not get countered, you empower it. So it does more damage. So, like, you're trying to counter a six-level fireball and you blow it, 
now that fireball, like your arcane manipulation failed and they've pulled magic off of you and now it's going to be even more deadly. And if it's not a damaging spell, um, any saving throw meant to resist it is done with disadvantage. So say they're trying to cast like dominate person. Um, now the person they're casting it on has disadvantage against the spell because it is now empowered. So it's a, it's got a little bit of a risk reward mechanic attached to it. Um, also, I made this spell wizard only because the whole idea around this spell is that you have to have a really good understanding of how magic works in order to use it, right? Mm -hmm. Like a sorcerer's counter spell, they just kind of innately know, like, oh, stop, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> and then they just kind of use mm -hmm. their innate magic to do it. A wizard casting the spell understands, like, the signs being woven and the materials being used and the words being spoken, and they're trying to, like, counteract that using the many explosive failures from their past. They're like, oh, if I add in a little bit of this and do this, it will result in the same kind of thing. Um, so you get a little bit of an unexpected result on their end, um, which coincidentally I think is another magic card, but that's aside from the point. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of where my head was at with this. Also, it's a fourth level spell because obviously it has to be more powerful than counter spell. The original, yeah. And I think that fourth level spells in D&D are just the worst. There's like four <laughs> good ones. Every time you get those couple levels where you're getting fourth level spells, it's like, cool, I have like, what, polymorph? Okay. And like, there's maybe one or two other ones that ever get used. Often the fourth level slot is used to upcast something else. Third so level yeah, exactly. So I was like, well, I want to make it a fourth level spell so that we have something else to do with that slot. And I also mm -hmm. just love the flavor of having an evocation counter spell because it's like the abjuration counter spell called counter spell, which we already have is very much like I'm warding off this magic. I'm dispelling it. This mm -hmm. is like, I'm, enhancing this magic and trying to make it blow up like it's the most evocation wizard thing i can imagine it's like i'm going to counter your magic by giving you too much um too much for you to wield basically is kind of the idea behind this so yeah that was that was what i came up with for my spell based on a on a spell i absolutely love this the effects the what do you call the uh drawbacks if you fail um all of that is amazing to me but what's even more amazing so as a dungeon master, I'm going to use this first. This is yeah. going to be this is going to be a spell that my NPC wizard is going to have. This is this is something that the players aren't going to know anything about. And then I'm going to use this on them. I'm going to have them roll the D8. I'm going to see what happens there. And he's just going to have all these fourth level, you know, at least two or three fourth level spell slots and just fire, fire back and, and stuff like that. <laughs> and then as long as they don't burn them up, they might be able to find that page in the wizard spell book afterwards, but I don't know yet. This is, this, this is awesome. And I think my best way to use this is definitely going to be as a dungeon master. I, I couldn't agree more about basically everything you just said. I love the disadvantage, like the 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 drawback, right? The fact that it weighs these pros and cons and it could blow up in their face. Um, I think that's so because counterspell, I mean, like it 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 either does exactly what you want it to, or you waste your reaction in a third yeah. level spell slot, which feels like a bummer, but like it can have such catastrophic effects. This is so cool. And while I love the like using this as a DM. And just thinking about the flavor of like, if they find the spell book, the page of the spell book, instead of being like, this could, it could all be like organized, normal spell pages. And then this one could just be a bunch of times they screwed up until they realized <laughs> like, oh, I actually figured like what the flavor text says, right? Like learning through iteration and through failure. It seems so cool. I, you match the flavor of that really well. And I, I love the I love rolling like I just love random up uh, random chance and mm -hmm, random effects too. and a counter spell that does that I think is really cool. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what you said about like the wizard spell book kind of being like this spell being like notes more like research notes just kind of like shit 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <hold> on. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I think that's very funny. Maybe, um, maybe even one of the pages put like a grade on it because isn't this from a professor? So like yeah. F, D plus, try harder. Exactly. A couple misspelled words. Yeah. I love it. So those were all very good spells. Uh, well done, guys. Well done.
So those are three very fun homebrew spells that you can use in your D&D game with your Dungeon Master's permission, of course, that revolve around Magic the Gathering Strixhaven cards. So with Strixhaven, a curriculum of chaos coming out soon, these might be spells that you would want to add to your game. So with that being said, with the cards that we chose, if you have some better ideas or if there's an idea that you'd like to share, be sure to leave a comment below. And if there's a Strixhaven Magic the Gathering card that you've find interesting to make a spell of go ahead and leave a comment about that as well and i do want to thank my guests uh tell them everybody where they can find you at trevor um classes and constructs you can find me in classes and constructs uh here on youtube uh and yeah this is kind of my bread and butter this is what i tend to do i do a lot of homebrew based on magic the gathering cards so if you're interested in this kind of stuff i'd love for you to check out my channel and josiah uh yeah you can find me pretty much everywhere at uh, dungeon dad uh predominantly i'd make youtube videos uh if you're not familiar with my content it is mostly taking old monsters from previous editions of DD that we don't have access to anymore and converting them into fifth edition and kind of talking about ways you can use them and that kind of stuff uh also if you're watching this like recently after it's been uploaded every thursday on twitch we have an innistrad campaign going right now which has is like two sessions deep at this point you can catch up on the vods but it's 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 really fun uh we've got aj pickett uh, margaret crone dalaric doxy and myself if you know who any of those people are uh all fighting werewolves and doing spooky stuff so come check nice. that out as well if you're a fan of magic and D, &D because we have a lot of fun very cool. And also don't forget that these spells are going to be on my website. So if you'd like to check them out, maybe print them and use them in your game, you can do so. There'll be a link in the description below. So thank you very much for watching and on to the next. <laughs>